Hey folks, it's James, and have you ever looked at the clock and realized you had an important client meeting in like two hours, but nothing to show except a few images you pulled off the web and a couple of bullet points? Well, what if you could turn that same anxious two hours into a charming sketch that not only presents your ideas, but actually helps you develop them at the same time? Well, get out your iPad, download the Procreate file I made for this walkthrough, and get ready to see how you can design and render at the same time, turning panic into a process that actually wins the day. So this is another one of these quick drawings that you can do, uh, believe it or not, based just on proportions. There was no scale involved in creating this drawing. So let's take a look now through the actions menu to the time-lapse replay. And as you recall, I can sit here and I can hold with the pencil and move it back and forth and this is the view that we're going to take. So this is my thought process as I'm developing this. I'm going to indicate to myself where the view is. It's going to be a one-point perspective looking right at this fireplace through the middle of this seating group. So now that's a quick approximation of what that's going to look like, and I'm just doing that for my own edification. And now I'm going to take that section that I did and I'm literally just going to pop it in, import it as a layer. There you can see it's, it's been brought in at the same width as the plan. And now I've got that vanishing point locked in. So now I'm going to go ahead and use Drawing Assist in Perspective Mode. I only had one vanishing point, so I just had to place it there. But I'm using Drawing Assist to also trace the verticals and the horizontals very quickly. And just give me a sense of what that room volume would look like if it were just stopping at that wall. But of course it doesn't stop at the wall. It's going to go back in. So you see me extending those lines. And now I'm just going to make a value judgment, make a call, an estimate, as to how deep that dining room is back behind there. Now I'm trying to figure out where the footprint of these two sofas might be in this symmetrical seating group. Actually what I've done here, now that I see it, is I've cut this plan and then I've stretched it to lie on the ground in this perspectival trapezoid. And then I've used the Move and Transform tool to take that plan from this big rectangle down to this foreshortened trapezoidal shape. And so that's going to save me all kinds of time guessing where this furniture goes. You can see that little dining room back there, but it's going to all be covered up by that fireplace gradually adding more and more information. So I've got the piers where I think they might be, the uh, columns between the windows, and this is going to have windows on both sides. And I'm starting to figure out how tall the back of the sofas would be. This is halfway from the floor to five feet. This is halfway. So there's that calculation. And again, most of this is freehand and just using proportions. So here I am trying to figure out the height of a seat. And if this is 30 inches, then half of that is 15 inches. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of calculations I'm making. So I'm starting to, I didn't want to draft these things, so I'm starting to use freehand lines to just block in these, what I would call placeholder uh, furnishings. And here comes back a little more precision. Now look at this whole thing now it gets blown up because I don't want to work that small anymore, but I have my proportions figured out. So I just kaboom, blow this whole thing up, and now it stretches out to the edges of this canvas. So this is really how design and presentation occurs at the same time, because you're basically thinking about the design. Would a wood floor look good? Well, sure, I guess so. Again, all this is freehand so far, and when you look closely, at that uh, freehand line work, it's really quite crude. But as we've often said, as long as your perspective is correct, the human eye, your clients will be very forgiving about what else seems to look crude. So here we go with our front coffee tables, and they're going to provide kind of a nice experiential frame to this whole drawing. Here's one of these classic 60s lights that I always like to use. Uh, mostly because I don't have to think about anything. I can just put it in and be done with it. But I am not an interior designer, as I've told you many times. Now you can see me adding the detail. I know that if there's a little bit of a sense of depth at these French doors, if these jams are seen returning in, and that's going to be a lot more believable to the client. So this is uh, this could qualify as the design part 
of the drawing. You know, don't undersell that. It's really not about rendering or presenting only. It's about developing your design as you're preparing these presentation drawings for your media. And again, here are the uh, verification of these critical levels on the fireplace. So now I know that fireplace hearth is roughly 40 inches high. And at this point, I create a new layer and I use a different color and now I truly am going to draft the entire proportions of this room. I'm going to draft all of the details that I've done freehand so far and that includes the coffee table and look how that just once you draft something like that it becomes so much more believable even though I'm really not working very hard to figure that out. The drawing assist is taking all those lines automatically up to that vanishing point and now I'm sort of blocking in these in a very mechanical, kind of a Minecraft way, blocking in books on these end tables. And this is really a lot of fun when you're using Drawing Assist. It's like tracing, but with kind of a magic hand attached because all the lines are being directed towards that vanishing point or they're being made automatically to be vertical or horizontal. I'm going to go back in and add these trusses and other important details, drafting them up a little bit more. Now all these details are on their own layer, so I always have the choice of using the drafted version or I could use the freehand version. So again, lines. Uh, so as I see this now, I think this is going to be a hybrid of drafted and freehand lines. So you can see the pillows are going to be freehand, but a lot of these other things are going to be fully drafted. And at this point, I want to start thinking about the light, how I'm going to have the shadow come down in this room. Because knowing where the light is coming from is going to help me not only apply shade and material colors to these different surfaces, but it's going to bring them alive when you see the difference between where light hits and where light doesn't. So you can see me, I'm literally thinking about the shadows. This isn't rocket science, but this would be the shade side and this would be the dark shadow side, and then this would be very light. And you can see I've turned the blue drafted layer into, I've desaturated it to look like a pencil layer. And now I'm just working the tones up one at a time, uh, freehand, using them. Uh, this is really actually very entertaining to do. So you're, you can see the tone itself is not applied very carefully. But because of the drafted, the kind of accuracy of the drafted layer, you can be very sloppy with the tone. I mean, look at these edges. No big deal. But if you pick the right level of intensity, you're going to get that uh, illusion of reality. And that involves darkening things as you go, adding a little bit more. I'm trying to sketch in some logs here on a new layer. Just setting up the kind of final touches that we're going to do with that big bold gesture of light. And you can see adding detail now, adding stones. I didn't end up liking the brick. So I think we changed it to stone later, but we'll have to see. I want to show how these door jams cast this shadow back in, how this sofa back cast the shadow onto the seat, etc. And now this is what I meant by the single gesture. I took the outline of all these red shadow details and I made a single fill of those things. I selected them using the freehand selection tool in freehand mode and then you can start adjusting it. So what I did is I took that black layer and in the layers menu I toggled on multiply blend mode. I also lightened it quite a bit and when you do that you see all the detail under that layer of shadow. And look how that room just comes alive very quickly because of that big light gesture. But it's still a little too, lit not literal, but it's just a little too simplistic. So I start to lighten it and show how bouncing light could start to lighten the mood in this space and make it more believable. And now, now I'm putting white highlights in. With layers, you can do all these wonderful things. Just come on the top of the layer stack and now I'm putting in some opaque white highlights and details. Now I'm going to put in some opaque white wood grain over here just to kind of get that retro 60s vintage rendering effect. And when we get to the end, here is our drawing. You can see all that texture up in there. 
and choosing what gets dark and what gets light so that things it all has to do with a story that you want to tell your client and let me show you what the layers look like here's the shadow layer all by itself so you can see the opportunities that there are in just the lighting I'm looking for just the line drawing there's just the line drawing layer okay and there you have it don't forget to download the original Procreate file I made for this lesson at the top of the description below. If you want to go deeper into the workflows I'm using in this What Was He Thinking series, check out the links in the description too. And if you're ready for the next installment, click here and I'll see you in the next session.